Now let's see how we can tweak some of the basic parameters to get the look we are after. I'll copy the spotlight to bring in a bit more definition to these particles. I'll decrease the intensity and give it a warm tint. We'll make a test render now and start by tweaking the overall density parameters first. As you can see here, two spinner controllers are being used to change the overall density parameter. And this is due to the fact that the density ranges over a huge number and to conveniently change the density over a huge range, uh, two spinners have been provided. The exponent changes the density in multiplications of tens and the final pass tends to fine tunes it. If we decrease the exponent from negative 1 to negative 2, the density will decrease from 0.5 of its value to 0 0.05. And if we decrease it to point ne the exponent to negative 3, then it will decrease to 0 0.005 of its original value. One thing to note here is you cannot increase the density however. Uh, the original density is 1 and if you try to increase the density it won't. So if we put 0 in the exponent then it becomes 10 to the power 0 equals 1 and 1 times 5 is 5 and you might think the density is 5 times its original value which is 1 but that's not the case. As you see if we uh, make the density 1 then it is same as that when we had the number 5 S and even if you crank this up to even 1000 it won't make any difference so the density cannot be increased only it will be decreased to some amount depending on what you put in the exponent and the final pass density If we enable the light intensity, then it will override the overall density of the particles for the lights in the scene only. To enable this feature, we will toggle the use button here. And this will change the density of the particles with respect to the lights in the scene, depending on what values we dial in here. Now if we decrease the light intensity, then more light will enter the particle cloud and the cloud will appear brighter. As you can see here, the overall density remains the same, but it appears even brighter as we dial down the light intensity. The two parameters work together the same way as we discussed earlier. Another interesting look you can give your particles is by enabling the additive mode. It's like the additive blending mode in 2D image processing. You can play around these parameters we discussed here to give your particles the look you want to give and in later chapters we will discuss more about how to um, customize your particles appearance by using magma flow and for this chapter we will move on and see how we can make our particles receive and cast shadow from other objects and on other objects in our scene. Before that, let me just quickly tell you about this override emission thing. Uh, if you enable this and give it a color, then the particles will emit that color from the areas that are not lit by the lights in the scene. So as you can see here, if we decrease, uh, if we increase the density, then the particles from inside will uh, start to emit the color that we have defined, which is blue in this case. And as you can see, the uh, area where, where it is not lit by the lights in the scene are emitting the blue color that is defined by the override emission parameter. Alright, now we will see how to make objects cast shadow on these particles. We will drop in a spear and place it between the light and the particles so that it will cast shadow on these particles.
we'll do a test render now and as you can see the spear in casting any shadow on these particles let's increase the radius of our spear so that it will block more light and maybe that's when the shadows will be visible nope still nothing so how to fix this well to make our objects cast shadow on these particles we have to uh, go to the matte objects rollout and add a spear to a selection set that will be created by clicking this icon here I will select the sphere first and create a new named selection set and now our particles may receive shadows from this object but still they are not so we have to enable the matte object mm, button here and then you can see that our sphere is indeed casting shadows on these particles let's move in our spear into the particle cloud and do a test render and you can see how the spear is casting shadow on these particles now let's see how to add other objects to our selection set we will make a copy of our spear here and we will add it to our selection set by clicking the plus icon here and now you can see both these spheres are casting shadows on these particles for our particles <coughs> Now for our particles to cast shadow on other objects in our scene, we have to do a few things. First we will select Krakatoa shadow generator for our spotlight and it will save attenuation maps for our particle shadows with the defined resolution and that will be used while rendering the shadows of these particles in other renderer. It also has a secondary shadow generator and this will be used to generate shadow for other objects in the scene while rendering in other renderers. We will select a path for saving our attenuation maps and in Krakatoa interface we will enable the save attenuation button. If we now render a single frame you will see it has saved a shadow map for that particular frame with the defined resolution and loaded that back in. Now you can switch to your favorite renderer and if you render the scene you will see the particles are the particles are casting shadow there. Now we can save it and take it to our favorite compositing application and merge those particles back in. I forgot to save my particle render so I'll just switch back to Krakatoa and do a render again and after that we will take both our renders to a compositing application. I'm just doing it for a single frame but you can do over a range of course. I have imported the rendered files to After Effects and you can see the overall composite looks like this and now you can apply color correction separately to your particles and also if you render the shadows out as a different element then you can apply a color correction or motion blur to the shadows as well separately of course this was just a very basic overview of Krakatoa and in subsequent chapters we will dive in deeper and explore the abilities of Krakatoa hope this tutorial was helpful and till next time take care